There we go. Well, there's an the electric motor. That's a small one. This is a newer elevator. I see that now. All electric components, the small motor is a newer elevator. Uh, older installation, which there's literally thousands of them just in our city, they're the size of a furnace motor. Uh, they've gotten much smaller now. But here you have the, the motor, the belt that drives the door opening mechanism. Some doors will lock the car doors by a mechanical arm. See how these arms are in straight line? If I'm down there trying to pull the car door open, it isn't going to budge because these are locked up. So what we've learned over the years is if we can just break this pivot point, either grabbing it and pulling this down or operating this pulley, once we break that over center, we can pull the doors open. Some of them don't have this restrictor that we're going to show you in a second. They use this as the door restrictor. So when this elevator doors are closed and you try to pull them open from the car, you can't. This is in line. All you have to do is break that over center and it'll slide right open. So we've learned to either pull on this, but a better option is generally you'll find it easier if you find a single belt pulley and that's over here it will turn the easiest. And I'm going to lift up this restrictor so you can see what I mean. Go ahead, Tim, run that belt. Once you broke over center, you can, if I was in that car, I could pull that door open by hand right now. So that just shows you another option. If you can't figure out why the doors won't open, have somebody go up above, find a single belt pulley and turn it, or break this thing, just pull it and, and, and break it over center and generally it will open up. Okay, I'm going to uh, show you one type of door restrictor. Uh, I know of about six different types. I'll try to explain some of them as best I can, but this is a real common one. And you can see the locks on a, a uh, elevator are fairly simple, really. They're very effective, but they're kind of simple. All we have is a latch that's notched out and it catches this piece of metal. And how you know, and all newer elevators have door restrictors on them, uh, like the elevator at my firehouse was put in in 82, uh, it does not. I can pull the car doors open anytime I want. It'll stop the elevator, but I can still pull them open. This one, if I was inside that car and tried to pull them open, I'll show you what would happen. If we watch this door restrictor, I pull on it, it catches. It won't allow that door to open. So that's a door restrictor. You know it's got a restrictor if you pull on the car doors and it opens about this far and stops. Somewhere there's some type of door restriction. So this is one of the simplest kind. Depending where I'm at, I can simply lift this rod and lift it, or I can locate it and stick something up and lift it manually, or if it's within reach, I can just grab it and hold it open until I pull the car doors open. We want the power shut off on the car because the motor's still energized uh, and it's holding it shut somewhat too. I can muscle it if I have to, but it, it, it pulls pretty hard because I'm turning them belts backwards. So that's a door restrictor. And here's another place on this one you can actuate it. If I pull this right here, see how I'm doing that? So I can lift the rod, I can shove this, or in some cases if I can reach it, just lift it up manually. So that's a real simple one. You'll see this type on a lot of them. So we're going to go ahead and open this door now. I'm going to operate the key and then we'll pull it open, turn the belt a little, and right now we, we've got the door and we can pull it open. Again, it's pulling a little bit hard because I'm going against the motor. The, the power is still into the motor. Okay, that's a door restrictor. Go ahead, Tim, and close that back up. Perfect. Okay, I, I'm going to try <clears throat> to explain this as best I can. Another type of restrictor that you will find, it's a plate, a spring-loaded plate that's on the car door, and in the shaftway, there's a piece of metal sticking out. And this plate, it's like on a spring. So here's a piece of metal in the, in the hoistway sticking out, and here's this spring plate. Well, when it's normal, the springs hold out, and if it's not in the landing zone, if the elevator is not in the landing zone, this, this plate will hit this piece of uh, angle iron on the, and it won't allow it to open. 
So you're looking, you can't, it pulls six inches and it stops. You can't find this, you can't find anything else. Look down in this location. The bar will generally be about that long and you can push on it with your finger and you can tell it's spring loaded. So all you do, here's the angle, you push it in and once it clears, the door open right up. It's called a uh, door restrictor that's, I think there's a special name for that. And I, it's, I, I'm drawing a blank on it right now, but it's generally right down in here. You're going to find it on the leading edge, edge of the door. And, and the ones I've seen have been blue and they're about this long. And, and that's what you do. When the elevator is in the landing zone, that long bar will have a notch cut out of it. When that elevator is exactly where it's supposed to be, that notch goes, that notch goes right past that angle like that when it's in the landing zone. When it's not in the landing zone, it hits it. So it, you can't open the door in this position here because that door restrictor plate will hit it. And all you gotta do, we have a, a, a new hotel right down from our station. That's what it has on the Drury Inn. It has a restrictor plate like that, spring loaded. So we just push it in and once you get that door past it, it opens right up. So sometimes you gotta look around. <clears throat> what I'd like to tell guys is wiggle the door, jerk it a few times and eventually Somebody's there and they can go, oh yeah, it's catching here. And you'll find it. Another type you'll find is if you look inside there and you see a little cylinder about this round with a pin, a black pin dropping down. It's an electromagnet. When the elevator's not in the landing zone, this pin's dropped down and it just hits a piece of metal like this. Something pretty simple, it just hits it. All you gotta do is take a screwdriver, a shove knife, lift that little pin up until it clears that metal and you're cleared. When it's in the landing zone, the electromagnet sucks that pin up in it and it opens and closes. When it's not, that pin drops down and it will hit. That's a, a, a type of door restrictor. I think that's co a common retrofit that they use for elevators that are older and don't have a door restrictor. They come in and put this little electromagnet and pin on it. And it, it's pretty effective, but real easy to uh, open. Uh, I know there was an incident once we, we uh, came to work on and. Uh, they said, yeah, they had an elevator run. They had to tear the doors off the car to get it open. And uh, we thought, mm, that sounds strange. We went over and on the other elevator, the one was out of service, uh, called it down and it took us like 10 seconds to figure out by just wiggling, we, oh, how, that pin's holding it. Lifted it up, cleared it right up. Probably in the last 30 years of hundreds of elevator runs, despite what elevator people say, we have never done any damage to an elevator whatsoever, just because of knowledge. The only time we did some had to force a, a doors open. The people that were in the car, there was a bunch of men in there that were strong and they tried to jerk the doors open and they jammed a suitcase in between there and got the whole door off a track. So we had to in that case. And that's the only time in probably 500 elevator runs, we've been able to do it with no damage whatsoever to the elevator. And I think it's imperative of firefighters we limit our damage. Elevators are super important to a building, especially you go to a building that's a, 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 a place for old, older people, um, retirement homes. They need the elevators. They cannot take the steps. And maybe these buildings only have one elevator in them or two at the most. You damage one, you've created a problem. Now your EMS is going to be going there all night because they're going to have problems getting up and down the steps. And so will we. Now we get there and we got to bring somebody out. We got to bring them out eight stories or 10 of the steps. So we try to make sure we don't do any damage to the elevators. And I think that's pretty important as uh, professional firefighters to, to try to learn as much as we can and figure it out and not do any unnecessary uh, damage. I got to go up a little more. Right there. Now I'll hit the stop button. Now what I'm going to do, I'll show you how an elevator works in its normal mode. Right now you can see those rollers down there and you see that little piece of metal uh, that's kind of angled. That's called the clutch or driving vane. It's got a lot of different terminology. I'm going to actually actuate this motor manually. I'm going to turn it. You see the, the driving vane hit that top roller. See how it does? Now as this motor o operates, it pulls the hoistway door open and the car door. It's got both of them. That's in the, it's, it's the landing zone. Now if we look down, generally the landing zone is maybe 8 to 12 inches below the threshold and 8 to 12 above it. So right here, even though that elevator is a little bit low, 
the, the elevator would open the car doors. You can see that. You can see how much space. But if we're the other way, it probably would miss it. Now I'm manually closing this. And you can see gravity and that relanding cable are pulling the hoistway doors open also. There we go. The restrictor is redone. The doors are totally closed. And we're back in business.